you there. Why did you decide to build a browser and um, what are you hoping it does? Yeah, so Comet is not yet another browser that we built just because we have a search engine and we need a browser for its distribution. We think of Comet as uh, leading to a true personal assistant that can be an agent for you and actually take actions. It's our transition from answers to actions. Um, we kind of want to make it joyful to just sit on a computer and do whatever you want and take all the boring stuff and delegate it to the assistant. And, and we think the best way to accomplish a personal assistant or an agent is with the help of a browser where you're logged into all your sessions. You don't have to be logged in on our servers. You can preserve your privacy there. So it was very natural for us to make that transition. Yeah. How are people using Comet? Because I've, I've been testing it for a few days now, and I've found some uses, a lot of summarization, a lot of like rote tasks, like clicking accept on LinkedIn invitations over and over again. Uh, but what are the use cases you're yeah. seeing most people do? A lot of people love uh, watching YouTube videos with Comet. And it's not just like, oh, summarize this video for me sort of thing. Uh, very fine grain searches or like finding similar videos related to that or like pulling something specific that was discussed in a podcast or an interview and like uh, completing the workflow of like sharing that with some of their friends, direct email and calendar integrations, unsubscribing from spam or like finding that hard to find email that, you know, you, you kind of need agentic search for that instead of building, going and building a custom index for Gmail or whatever. It's, it's, it's always there with you everywhere you are. And that convenience is what makes it like a really special product. Now, you mentioned privacy, and this was actually one of my things that I wanted to ask you about, because when I started using Comet, my first concern was, okay, I log into my email, I log into my Twitter, I'm checking my DMs, I'm maybe doing some bank online banking in my Comet browser. I assume that those screenshots of that activity are being sent to Perplexity to help analyze it, to be able to summarize it. So give me some reassurance that I'm not just like opening up my entire internet browsing history to you. We're never going to have like a logged in version of your Twitter or LinkedIn or anything like that. This is actually the important distinction between um, the, the chat GPT operator approach where everything is done on a virtual server. Mm. Uh, that's, that's not happening here. Uh, for that one particular prompt, uh, whatever information is needed for the agent to complete that is being sent into the chains of thought and sent to the server. But uh, it, it'll never be stored as like, oh, I have like Kevin's uh, particular DMs or something. And uh, all the uh, intermediate steps are not going to be like uh, saved in our in our logs. Uh, it's going to be only the prompts and, and the final output. And uh, you can still choose to delete those prompts too. Uh, that gives you full control over your all privacy aspects. And um, wh what is the most private version of this is the model living on the client. We cannot do that because the models that can run on the client are pretty dumb, right? They, they're not capable of the sophisticated, reliable reasoning. And um, in fact, like the lack of reliability in any of the things Comet does today is all coming from limitations of the model. So uh, the ultimate reliable version of Comet, a system that can go do anything for you, is going to most likely be on the server at least for the next two, three years. And to what extent are you using your own models versus other people's models for this? Um, I think like uh, we heavily use three three models, our own fine tune of an, uh, the cutting edge open source model, um, open AI, like, like latest models, and then Anthropic's latest models. Like these are the three models we use. What extent keeps changing over time? How, how do you think you can win here if you're not building the underlying model yourself? Well, one thing we are con consistently seeing is no one seems to have an edge in being the number one here in the model race. Uh, and, and like four or five players constantly competing for the best agent, the capabilities, instruction following. And the good thing is they're all hill climbing on exactly the same benchmarks so that all their models end up being completely undifferentiated, which is essentially the necessary criterion for it being a commodity. And who benefits from that is us. Because like we can get to take that and the prices are constantly getting lowered. Like GPT-5 is cheaper than the previous agentic model. And then uh, that, that just benefits us. And we want to play the game on like how to orchestrate all these different models and give the world-class end user experience. Where there's so much more harder challenges we're solving uh, outside the models, which is the browsing functionality, controlling the browser, uh, parsing the relevant information, orchestrating all these in different tools together building eval sets internally for like how agents can be made reliable. We think there's like a lot of 
problems to solve there that like we'd rather not focus on these things. All right, so let me just pin you down on this one point. Is what you're saying that in order to build the sort of winning AI browser, it's not really about the underlying quality of the model because those are just mostly going to be commodities. It's really just a product problem and you think perplexity will build the best product. I think so. It, there are some nuance to your statement, yeah. but I largely agree with this. Okay. You still need some auxiliary models to do the like the right classification, to route to which model, uh, or like it depends on which kind of task. How is the agent structured for those kind of domains? So we'll, we will be doing stuff like that. We will not be like having 100 GPUs without like tens of thousands of GPUs. We'll not have a million GPUs. Yeah. 